Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I just woke up from a nap and I was like, I want to film a video. So here I am to show you all of the books that I currently have checked out from the library. Some that I hope to finish in the month of January. Um, basically everything that's from my cart I have now here in front of me. Um, to show you, some of these things are old, like you've probably seen them in a video three months ago. But most of these are new. So I'm going to start with my pile of... Let's start with my pile of nonfiction. So the book I'm almost done with is The Stolen Year by Anya Kamenetz. And this is a book about how COVID changed children's lives, how political issues and infighting between adults really caused harm to children. Um, it's written by an NPR reporter, education reporter. I'm almost done with it. I have like 30 minutes to go in the audiobook. I think it's going to end up being a four-star read. After that, I'm probably going to read uh, I've Had to Think Up Way A Way to Survive by Lynn Melnick. I have this one already checked out on audiobook and ready for me next and I've been wanting to read this since I've heard Olive talk about it on a book Olive. It's basically a memoir that interlaces the life of the author with the life of Dolly Parton um, and trying to pull at things from that. I love when memoirs have kind of gimmicks like that if they're pulled off well and I'm hoping that I really enjoy this one. Then I have another book I'm super excited about and that is The Right to Sex, Feminism in the 21st Century by Amia Srinivasan and I first saw this a long time ago like when it first came out it was on my radar but I didn't get to read it when it came out and now I've recently seen Roxana no Novel Sanctuary talk about it or I saw it on her Instagram I think and it kind of reignited my interest in it and so I started researching it, it again and now I have it downloaded on audiobook and it's ready to go so this one will probably be um, after this one. I also have this one already checked out and ready to go and it's The Other Side of Prospect. This is a story of violence and justice in the American city by Nicholas Dawidoff and this is a book that looks into a case of gun violence where um, a man died and somebody else got sentenced and I think that the person who got sentenced was not the person who actually committed the crime and it kind of looks at injustice and it looks at violence in in this town as well. It's an older case I think it happened in the early 2000s um, and I'm interested to see kind of like a narrative nonfiction looking at this 20 years after the fact. Another one I'm really excited about is The Year of the Tiger, An Activist Life by Alice Wong. I also have this one on hold. It hasn't come in yet. I'm not sure I'm gonna listen to it completely on audiobook because it's like a mishmash of things. It's kind of like a scrapbooky thing. So it does have a lot of writings from Alice Wong but it also has like art and different poems and things. She is a disability author. She has another book that I've seen before that I haven't read um, on disability and I think she's kind of like the editor for it. One book I haven't really heard that much about and I'm not sure about is Michelle Obama's new book. Have any of you read the new Michelle Obama book? This is The Light We Carry Overcoming in Uncertain Times. I feel like this would be good for me as like an inspirational thing. Um, I always feel like the way that she sees the world is inspirational and sometimes I am very very cynical about the state of the world and the state of politics and I really enjoyed that about her first book is how positive she was about so many things in her life but I haven't really heard anybody talk about this and if they're liking it so I'm not really sure. It's not like at the top of my list of things that I want to read um, right now but maybe that'll change. I also have another book that I have on hold and I'm waiting for it to come in on audiobook and it's All Down Darkness Wide. This is a memoir by Sean Hewitt. Sean? I think that's how you say it. Um, it's Irish. If I remember correctly, it's about um, queer life and so it's an honest portrayal of what it's like to be caught in the undertow of a loved one's deep depression. When I first saw this on Alex's booktube. What page are you on? And yeah. I'm glad that he's not leaving booktube. <laughs> I also have this one which is super old, I've had forever. It's The Woman's House of Detention, A Queer History of a Forgotten Prison by Hugh Ryan, and I'm still thinking I'm interested in this, so I still have it. A book that I probably will have to return before I get to read it and then put it back on hold because there's such a huge holds list is Suck to America, A Journey Below the Mason-Dixon to Understand the Soul of a Nation by Imani Perry. I believe this is the one that won the National Book Award for nonfiction this past year in 2022. Interested to read it. I probably won't get to it right away because I do need to return it to the library um, because everybody else wants to read it. But I also have the new How a Culture of Conspiracy Keeps America Complacent by Sarah Kenzier. This one has a really interesting way that it describes itself. Um, it says it's a timely unflinching argument that uncritical faith in broken institutions is as dangerous as false narratives peddled by propagandists. 
Conspiracy theories are on the rise because officials refuse to enforce accountability for real conspiracy. Basically, like people in government are not telling us everything um, and they don't explain things well. They're not good at communication and that's why so many people create conspiracies in their mind. At least that's what the argument is here. I want to read it just to see what I think. If you saw last year, I read quite a few books that dealt with conspiracy theories and I'm interested to see if this one adds anything to the conversation. I also have, last but not least, Who's Raising the Kids? Big Tech, Big Business, and the Lives of Children by Susan Lin and this looks into how basically children today are growing up in a world where all of their lives are completely digitized everything that they are doing all the growing that they are doing is done on this stage I'm always fascinated to learn about children um, and how children deal with the world let's go through my um, adult fiction pile first one is seven days in June by Tia Williams I'm really excited about this one it looks like it's a, a book about people who basically were together a long time ago and then came back together to each other I'm interested to try it out I do have it on hold on audiobook. It hasn't come in just yet. A book that I've had out, I've returned, I've had out again, but I haven't read yet is Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen, the great Julia Whalen audiobook narrator of basically all the things um, with her own novel. She arrives at a last minute book convention, unexpectedly spends a whirlwind night with a charming stranger. So I think it's about self growth and about romance but I haven't gotten to it yet. The next one that I have is The Cherry Robbers by Sarai Walker. And this is an interesting concept of a book where basically there's a bunch of sisters and each sister gets married and every time each sister gets married, they end up dying. And so I think it's them trying to figure out what it is that's happening there. It's also historical, so it's set in the 1950s. One that I think I'm gonna have to return just like South to America because of the holds list is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. And then I'll just put it back on hold and bring it back. But it looks like it's about inheritance two children who basically learn about secrets about their family and the mystery of a long lost child challenge everything the siblings thought they knew about their lineage and themselves. I also have one I'm really interested in because of how many people I've seen put this on their 2022 best of list and that's Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. It's a book that looks into mental health. I don't really want to know more about that. I'm going to get into it. Although I do have to say I like the alternate cover of this instead of this one. Um, this one doesn't really give me the vibes that the other cover gives me. I also have Salt Slow by Julia Armfield. Everyone is reading the other book about our wives under the sea or whatever it's called. Um, and this is a short story collection by the same author. It came out before the book that's now I'm seeing everywhere. And I'm interested to try it out and see what I think. It's a book that's supposed to look into women's experiences in contemporary society, which is my favorite thing to read when it comes to short stories, in my opinion. So I'm hoping that I like this one. I have a more maybe lighthearted one, but we'll see. And that's The Lifeguards by Amanda Ear Ward. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this one. It's not at the top of my interest list, I would say, out of this pile. And it kind of gives me the vibes of like, um, what's that show on HBO with the Reese Witherspoon? Basically, that's the vibe I get of like all these very accomplished mothers. Something happens and they're super protecting their little boys. It says it's a powerful narrative complemented by gossip from neighborhood listservs, secret text messages, and police detective investigations. And it looks like a very summery book and I want to be in the summer. I do not want any more snow. I have another book that I've tried. I've maybe read a few pages and then I had to return it. It had a really long holds list and now I have it back and I'm gonna try it again. It's Style A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. I'm just hoping for like a light family comedic book. I also have Counterfeit by Kristen Chen. A group of people or a woman that is part of a group that basically makes counterfeit handbags. Peering behind the curtain of the upscale designer storefronts and the Chinese factories where luxury goods are produced, Chris and Chen interrogates the myth of the model minority through two unforgettable women determined to demand more from life. And then the last one that I have um, is a, actually a young adult book. I'm not sure if I'm going to read it. Again, one that I haven't seen that many people talk about. Maybe I haven't been super active in like looking and seeking content, but I haven't seen a lot of people mention I'm the Girl by Courtney Summer, especially because of how many people love Sadie and all her other books. I don't know very much about it, honestly. Then I'll show you my kids fiction. The one that I want to read next is I want to finally read Holly Goldberg Sloan's Counting by Sevens. I have enjoyed Holly Goldberg Sloan's books before. I think it's about um, a character who is a little bit different than other kids. I also have It's the End of the World and I'm in My Bathing Suit by Justin A. Reynolds. Looks like a romp, looks like super fun, and I'm excited to try it out. I also have the new Celia C. Press book, Tumble, and this is supposed to look into like luchador culture. And then the last one that I have is Shine On Loose Belief, and it just looks like a really cute chapter book. She's a soccer star, or was a soccer star, but she has a knee injury now, and so now 
she doesn't know really what hobbies to have and it's also supposed to focus on family which i love in kids fiction as you can tell i don't know very much about any of these books that's kind of how i go into books all the time for my graphic novel pile and graphic memoir pile the book i'm um, currently reading is messy roots by laura gao i'm like halfway through i'm hoping to finish this one this weekend this is a graphic memoir of a wuhanese american so she actually moved here a long long time ago and it's about her like going back home and then kind of like what is like growing up in america when you are from um foreign country i also have muhammad najim um war reporter how one boy put the spotlight on syria i really think the pictures the illustrations look amazing inside and that's what excited me for it and i always love to read um about refugees i love to read about you know how people survive these kinds of things that you have no control over it looks really great i'm excited to try it out i also have the keeper soccer me and the law that changed women's lives this is a graphic memoir by kelsey ervick i really like the way it looked inside i haven't heard anybody talk about this i just spotted it just being at the library one day and it looks like it's like a mix of history and also memoir it's more freeform and i really like the look of that so i'm gonna try that one i have besties find their groove this is the second book in this series and i really enjoyed the first one i'm excited to try out the this one as well it's just so cute really nice grounded in real life friendship i love that in graphic novels i have ride on by faith aaron hicks i've had this one out forever i still haven't read it it's here <laughs> it's a horse book and it's like a realistic fiction book i also have fence volume five it came out and I, I don't know, like, do I need to read the other ones again? Like, reread them and then try this one? I feel like I forgot everything that happened in Fence. I love this series. I think they're some of the best sequential graphic novels. Like, I never keep up with graphic novels that have so many volumes. I usually just read one thing and I'm done. So that is something that excites me about this series, that I really love it and I want to keep trying more of them or i want to keep up with the series as they come out but maybe i might have to read volumes one through four before i try this one because i don't remember that much about it i still have acting class by nick dernasso and i haven't read it yet so here it is i have three more um i also got chef's kiss by Jarrett melendez i got this one really recently like a few days ago and it looks cute interested to try this one out it's an adult graphic novel it says fresh funny and romantic this coming of age story about friendship finding yourself and following your dreams will melt your heart and teach you how to bake a mean pear tart i also have the high desert a memoir this is from jane spooner and it's looking into this person growing up kind of like as a punk not fitting in and um i think it also looks into their race and then the last adult graphic novel i have is century life on the spectrum um this is a comics anthology and so it's each a different artist and illustrator inside it looks cool inside so that's that one i think that's all that i have to show you if you can believe it um there's like two things on here that i showed you many months ago and they're still there and i'm embarrassed about it so i'm not gonna tell you about them <laughs> but if i read them i'll let you know i hope that you've been doing well i think i'm gonna come back and make a best books that i read in 2022 video at some point this month but i need to like really think about this and think about what's on the top of my list but thank you so much for watching this kind of impromptu tbr of sorts and i hope that you've been doing well and i'll see you again in my next video bye bye